Hi guys, um, welcome. See, uh, I hope that you are all including some art in your day-to-day -day life. Um, today we're going to have a very simple lesson that will apply to my younger students. Um, if you are in eighth grade or fifth grade, maybe even fourth grade, uh, you might want to try drawing a still life, and I challenge you to do that. Um, a still life is just uh, inanimate objects, or maybe fruit, uh, anything that doesn't have life, that is just sitting there, that is still, that's considered a still life. And I would like to share with you um, a still life that my son Jackson did just the other day. Uh, he just took some ordinary household objects and put it on a table and drew it. So I know that you guys all have some objects at home and uh, if you don't have your sketchbook or an old sketchbook, maybe you've got some paper lying around or an old notebook, even if it has lines in it, that is fine. And if any of you would like to send me your drawings uh, when we're done with this lesson throughout the next week or so, uh, go ahead and send me a picture of your um, drawing and email it to uh, Mrs. Barkmeyer. Okay, so this is Jackson's still life. This is an old-fashioned egg beater, a bowl, and some eggshells. And here is the real deal. So, you just had to draw this from an angle, as you see. He did a really good job. And this is the bowl. The only thing that Jackson didn't include, and we talked about this, was maybe a little bit of a shadow. Depending on where the light source is for your picture or for your still life, um, there may be, you know, if there's light over here uh, coming in from a window or artificial light like a lamp or an overhead light, uh, um, if the light's over here, then there'd be a shadow underneath the bowl or a shadow even underneath the egg beater and even underneath the eggshells, there could be a little bit of shadow. And what you could do uh, to do that is take your pencil and um, you know cast a little bit of a shadow and then blend it with your finger or a tissue, something like that. So for my younger students today, we are going to draw a bunny because Easter is coming soon. Um, so. Go ahead and find any old paper. Like I said, it doesn't have to be your sketchbook or an old sketchbook. It might even be just um, a piece of mail that you got that you could draw on the back of an envelope or something like that. I know that you guys probably have some old school supplies around too. Maybe uh, lined paper from a notebook is fine. So um, this is super simple, like I said, and I'll show you step by step uh, how I learned to draw kind of a cartoon uh, rendition of a bunny when I was a kid, okay? So, um, it doesn't matter if you have a great big box of crayons like this, or a really small box of crayons like this, or maybe you've got glitter crayons, or maybe you have some random crayons in a drawer somewhere, or maybe, if you're lucky, you might have some oil pastels laying around, which are really fun to work with too. Okay, so I'm going to, um, I think I'm gonna use an oil pastel just because it's brighter and you'll be able to see a little bit better what I'm doing. All right, so for this bunny, I'm going to start with a circle, which will be the head, okay? So I have to sort of map out where that's gonna be on my paper. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's not even centered. It doesn't have to be centered, okay? And then I think I'm gonna go ahead with the floppy ears. Um, and maybe they have a little bit of a bend in them. And there's one over here. There's my ears, okay? 
and I'm going to show you on my rabbit uh, the style of eyes that my teacher in third grade, her name was Mrs. Holmes, and then she became Mrs. Kicker, and I never forgot the way she drew her eyes. They were really happy, and they looked like this. It's kind of her trademark, I think. All of her eyes on her characters looked like they were smiling, whoops, a whole lot. And I did, I did the left one really fast, so it's kind of droopy eyes on that side. But you know what? Bob Ross says there are no mistakes in art, just happy little accidents, right? So maybe I can fix that a little bit. If not, be fine just the way it is. Right, okay. Um, then I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a little nose on this rabbit. And you could do a circle or a little bit of a triangle. Maybe you wanna leave a tiny bit of white for reflection. And while I have this pink, maybe I'll go ahead and put some pink up in the ears. And maybe you are creating something for your grandma or grandpa. Maybe you're creating something for your mom or dad or just yourself. Something to keep busy and engaged. I challenge you to draw your own bunny. And you don't have to make it just like this. You can do your own way too. I put a little bit of pink in the ears for fun. All right, um, next I'm going to take a black crayon or oil pastel and I'm just going to put a few little whiskers coming out. These are long whiskers and I did them just kind of fast, right? And then with that same black, I'll go ahead and put a smile, a smiley mouth, okay? Not always do we have to draw everything out with a pencil and then go over it with our crayon. Uh, you know what, if you mess up today, it is okay. Because <laughs> you can get another piece of paper or like I said, fix it and practice. Um, so if you wanna just start right away with your medium of crayons or oil pastels, or maybe you wanna use markers or maybe you've got some colored pencils at home, you can go ahead and do that. No one is saying uh, that this has to be perfect, okay? Okay, now I'm going to start and make almost a circle. But I'm gonna stop at the bottom. And this is going to be the rabbit's body. Okay, and then the hind legs. And come behind. I'm gonna go on the other side as well. I'm gonna hook them around like so, right? Well, I've seen your dog sit like that before. And I'm gonna make the front legs. They'll be a little bit smaller, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Do that on this side as well. And connect the lines on the bottom. Okay, then if you wanna go ahead and make a few little marks on the feet, show where the toes are, go ahead and do that. And then I think I'm going to go up on one side of the rabbit and make a tail. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put some grass down on the bottom. It is very nice to know that spring is coming, isn't it? We actually had our first day of spring the other day. And it won't be long before our grass is really green. For the grass, 
unless I am just kind of going in different directions along the bottom. Okay, and then maybe I will do my artist signature down here in the grass. You know, the artist's signature is important so you know who did the drawing. Maybe you even want to put the date, 2020 or just 20. I kind of made my artist's signature part of the grass so it didn't detract too much. All right, so now that you've got your basic drawing, you can go back, maybe play with color a little bit, Maybe this is just going to be more of an outline picture, uh, especially in working with oil pastels. You can do some blending if you'd like. Uh, maybe under the chin a little bit here. Maybe you don't want to color the whole thing solid. But like I said, do a bit uh, more of an outline. You can take some time and play with that, with color. It's just one very simple drawing that you can do. And older kids, if you want to do this too, you are more than welcome. But also, I challenge you to try a still life. So, there's our little rabbit drawing for today. And here is an example of a still life. This would take me a lot longer to do. Jackson, how long did it take you to do this still life? I don't know. He doesn't know. <laughs> I would say, hmm, it would take at least an hour to do something that detailed, right? Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and are continuing to make art and have art be part of your life. And I will see you another day. Bye-bye. And see. See. Oh. See. Okay, bye guys. I think I pulled a muscle trying to shut this.